Yo, what's up everyone? Today we're going to be doing the kinetic section of the 2023 US NCO local exam. So this is questions 25 through 30. All right, 25. Terbutyl chloride reacts with hydroxide ion in a process that is first order in both terbutyl chloride and hydroxide. If both reactants are doubled in concentration, how does the reaction rate change? Well, uh, since the process is first order with terbutyl chloride and hydroxide, that is an overall rate order of two. So if both your reactants are doubled, if we do two to the second power for the, um, the overall order, then that means our reaction is good. The rate of a reaction is going to quadruple or times four, which is answer choice C. Hey everyone, I just want to say if some of these explanations seem a little fast paced to you, then I have a lot of videos on my channel that are more tutorial based. Uh, they can help you learn the content and then come back to these tests to take full advantage of them. Also, if you're enjoying the video, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. As far as I know, these are the only videos on YouTube that have work solutions for the USNCO. Uh, so a like and a subscription would help it reach more people. Um, and that's it. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of the video. Let's move on to question 26. Under certain conditions, the rate of decomposition of hydrogen peroxide is first order in hydrogen peroxide. It is observed that the concentrations, uh, the concentration of hydrogen peroxide decreases by 1% in 300 seconds. What is the rate constant for this for the reaction? Well, we're told that the de the decomposition is a first order reaction. So let's use our first order kinetics uh, formula, which tells you that your the natural log of the concentration at some time t is negative kT plus the natural, uh, natural log of the initial concentration. Okay, so uh, we know that the concentration of hydrogen peroxide decreases by 1%. So it doesn't really matter what your initial concentration was. Let's just say it was one molar. Well, then your concentration at, at some time T or at 300 seconds is going to be 0 0.99 molar. So let's plug that in. So natural log of 0 0.99 molar is equal to minus k times t we know our t is 300 seconds and then plus the natural log of the initial concentration which we're saying is one molar again it doesn't matter what numbers you actually use uh, just as long as the natural the uh the concentration at some time t is uh, 99 percent of your initial concentration and so at this point all you have to do is solve for k so k is going to be Let's do natural log of 0.99 um, minus the natural log of 1, which is 0, uh, divided by negative 300 seconds. That is 3.35 times 10 to the negative 5. And the units are per second. Um, and that is answer choice A. Let's move on to question 27. The pain reliever naproxen has a half-life of 12 hours in the human body. A patient takes a 400 mg tablet of naproxen at 8 a.m. and a second 400 mg tablet at 8 p.m., uh, 12 hours after the first dose. How much naproxen remains in the patient's body at 8 a.m. the following day, 12 hours after the second dose? So let's just uh, write out what's happening. So initial time, let's say zeroth hour, you have 400 milligrams, And at the 12th hour, you add 12th hour you add another 400 milligrams to the system. So how much is in the system uh, total at the 12th hour? Well, half of that 400 milligrams that you took initially is going to decompose since your half-life is 12 hours. So that's going to be 200 milligrams plus the additional 400 milligrams that you took on the 12th hour. So that is 600 uh, milligrams. And so we're asked how much remains at 8 a.m. the following day, which is 12 hours after this uh, second hour. Well, the, that's going to be the 24th hour. So that means uh, one half of this value is going to remain. So that is going to be 300 uh, milligrams, which is answer choice D. Let's move on to question 28. Uh, for the aqueous reaction that the following mechanism is proposed, which observation is consistent with this mechanism? Um, all the answer choices talk about the reaction uh, and the rate law of the reaction. So let's determine the rate law of this reaction given this mechanism. The, uh, the rate law is going to be dependent on the slowest step. The slowest step is going to be uh, the, the step that determines your overall rate. So the rate of our slow step, which is this one, 
is going to be that the rate is equal to k let's just call it k1 times the concentration of your p o h 3 to the first power because there's a coefficient of 1 here uh, times your i2 to also the first power the problem with this is that this p o h 3 is uh, not actually part of your reaction that is an intermediate and as you know we can't have intermediates in our rate law so how do we uh, get around that well you have to look at your fast equilibrium step which is this one here now this reaction is helpful because you know that the rate of the forward reaction is going to equal the rate of your reverse reaction so what is going to be the forward reaction let's say forward reaction well the rate is equal to let's just call it k2 times the concentration of your uh, reactant which is h p o o h 2 and then the reverse reaction is going to have a similar format so rate is equal to let's call that k3 times that of the product which is p o h 3 now as we said before the rate of the forward reaction is going to equal the rate of the reverse reaction so let's write that out k2 is going to uh, k2 times h the concentration of hpo oh2 is going to equal k3 times p oh3 and so what we really want here is to get an expression um, that is uh, that equates to this we want the concentration of this in terms of other reactants um, and so let's isolate that the concentration of POH3 is going to equal K2 over K3 times the concentration of HPOOH2. And now what we can do is we can plug that back into our initial uh, expression here for the rate law. So rate is equal to K1 times K2 over K3 times the concentration of HPOOH2 times I, the concentration of I2. And what we can do is that since all these are constants, K1, K2, and K3 are all constants, we can just make this all equal to one K value. Let's just call that K. So that is your overall rate, uh, rate law for this reaction. And now let's go through our answer choices. A, the reaction is first ordered with both HPOOH2 and I2. Uh, that's true. You can see in the rate law that uh, this is first order and this is also first order. So one checks out. B, the rate law is independent of the I2 concentration. That is not true. I2 is part of your rate law. It has a rate order of one. So B is incorrect. C, the reaction goes faster as the concentration of H plus is increased. H plus is not part of your rate law. So H plus, the concentration of H plus does not affect the rate. D, the reaction goes slower as the concentration of I minus is increased. Similarly, uh, I minus is not part of the rate law, so it doesn't actually affect the rate. Um, therefore, our answer is A. Let's move on to question 29. In which ways may a catalyst increase the rate of a reaction? One, it may alter the rate law of the reaction. Um, a catalyst can, uh, it, it does completely change the pathway that a reaction takes. So that means it can change the elementary steps um, that a reaction takes and because of that it can actually affect the rate law of the overall reaction so one is correct two it may make the overall reaction more exothermic um, that is not true a reaction is going to be is going to have a certain uh, change in enthalpy value regardless of what path it takes remember let's say this is your energy diagram and this is your time if you have reactants here and products here a normal pathway might look like this and a catalyzed reaction might look like this so you have more intermediates but overall your activation energy is lower than that of the uncatalyzed reaction and so uh, that's what makes the reaction go faster the fact that the activation energy is smaller with a catalyzed uh, pathway however what it doesn't change is going to be your change in enthalpy which is the difference between the energy values of the reactants and the products so a catalyst will not make an overall reaction more exothermic. It won't change the enthalpy value at all. So that too is wrong. Therefore, our answer is one only or A.
Let's move on to our last question, 30. The rate constant of a chemical uh, reaction is increased by 63% when the temperature is raised from 40 degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius. What is the activation energy of this reaction? Well, since we're looking at the dependence of the rate constant with respect to temperature, the, the formula we want to use is that the natural log of K2 over K1 is equal to your activation energy over R times 1 over temperature 1 minus 1 over temperature 2. This equation will map out how your rate law or rate constant is dependent on temperature. Okay, so since we want to find the activation energy, let's, uh, let's uh, isolate for Ea. So that's going to be R times the natural log of K2 over K1 over 1 over temperature 1 minus 1 over temperature 2. The R value that, one, that you want to use here is going to be 8.3145. And uh, just for space, uh, I won't write the units, uh, times the natural log of K2 over K1. Now, what is this value? Well, you're told that the rate constant increases by uh, 63%. So K2 is going to be 1.63 times K1. So K2 over K1 should equal 1.63. All right, and then your temperature values, one over T1, that's your initial temperature, that's 40 degrees Celsius, but you want that in absolute temperature, which is Kelvin, and Kelvin is 273 plus the Celsius value, so that's going to be uh, 313, and then minus one over temperature two, which is 45 degrees Celsius, so one over uh, 318. And so if you plug this into your calculator, let's do, uh, 8.3145 times the natural log of 1.63 divided by uh, 1, sorry, 1 over 313 minus uh, 1 over 318. And that is 80.9 kilojoules per mole. The value that you got on the calculator is in joules, so I just converted that into kilojoules, um, and that is answer choice D. And that was the entire kinetic section. I hope that was helpful. I hope you were able to learn something. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. Peace.